I believe it's very important that there be an executive order declaring Juneteenth as a national holiday. That won't be a time to just celebrate, but to use transformation, love and peace to have America come together. Here in Portland, people joined a nationwide celebration. Juneteenth marks the day in 1865 when slaves in Galveston, Texas were informed they were free. This year it takes place after weeks of intense protests for racial justice. Yeah, we're watching this crowd actually growing outside of the Justice Center. There were more people here earlier in the evening, but they all left and were apparently on some kind of a march, but it has returned. You can see that people have brought speakers out here. It's almost a little bit like a party atmosphere that is going on out here. There's music playing through those speakers, and this is all coming after a day of celebration here outside of the Justice Center, but also a call to action. It was a day of music. Let us march on to victory as one. Poetry. I'm tired of being too black. I have just the right amount of black. And dancing. <laughs> For several hours, young black artists and community members took turns sharing their stories. Well, the policing system we have today still exists. We will never know justice and we will never know peace. The Youth March. So scream with everything in your body. Organized by 17-year-old Central Catholic High School student Asukulu Sangolo. I really wanted to come out and invite all of my friends um, and ask them all to promote and to make sure that everyone around them knows that this is not just a moment, but this is a movement and this is for us. Throughout the event, speakers reminded folks that they have to keep up the momentum of this movement and that these protests aren't going anywhere. Oh, I feel like a lot of people thought it was a trend, but these are our lives and it's not a trend. Like we have to deal with a lot of these things every single day. I think that until change has happened to the police get defunded to what we're reaching gets reached, I think that these will still go on. Right after that rally ended, another began, this time much smaller. How long, oh Lord? The Portland interfaith clergy resistance gathered to pray for an end to racism and police violence. We wanted to create some sacred space to let the message be known that we believe that we are all created in the image of the divine and that we can no longer tolerate even a little bit of violence from the police. Both groups echoing the importance of defunding the Portland police. Ted Whelan, the city council, breadcrumbed the black community in Portland $15 million. We asked for $50 million or more at least, and they gave us 15. So we need more and we're demanding more. Some faith leaders even returning tonight to watch the actions of Portland police. I lay everything at the, at the hands of the police. What they're doing is outrageous. So we're going to come witness. Um, we're going to make clear that we are not okay with what they're doing. And that group, the Portland Interfaith Clergy Resistance, was created after the 2016 election riots here in Portland to call for an end to police violence. Now, several of those clergy members said they would be here tonight. We haven't seen them yet, but they say they believe any violence that happens out here is started by police. Reporting live in downtown Portland, Drew Reeves, Fox 12, Oregon.